Brakathia Hawa, Brakathia was shy, Brakathia Hawa, Brakathia was shy, Brakathia Hawa, Brakathia Hawa, Bashim Yawashai, Pohashim, Racha Kodash, the balance of the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone, which well. Salutations to the whole for the elect out there, you Akim, the Zadakim, that do this thing in the utmost truth and sincerity. On the priest Shaman, this week's topic, I want to be responding to uh, President Biden uh, just put sanctions on Russia concerning the Ukraine conflict. Now, I pray that Lord willing, this show is able to stay up because every time I speak on this topic, my channels have gotten strikes and it's really frustrating, you know, because I, w- I want to speak on it. Um, now, this is what I want to say. Cle- Ecclesiastes 3 and 1 re- uh, reads, to everything there's a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven, right? So the thing on everybody's mind is, is there going to be a World War Three? Well, there is going to be a World War Three, but it's just not the time yet. Why? Um, let's read this Isaiah chapter 14 and I'm just going in the spirit because I don't have, I didn't have my scriptures lined up, but I'm going to go in the spirit, you know, Isaiah 14 and 24 says the Lord Yahweh Bashim Yahushai of hosts has sworn saying, surely as I have thought, so shall it come to pass. And as I have purpose, so shall it stand. So the Lord says, look, pretty much before World War three takes place. The RFID microchip that is written about in the book of Revelations, the 13th chapter and the 16th verse on down, must come to pass before this World War III event. That has to be implemented on a worldwide uh, stage. Just like the current thing that we can't speak about is being implemented on a worldwide level and, you know, mandated. So too shall the RFID microchip be in the entire world. Once that takes place, then World War III will happen and it will be between Russia and the United States. And not only that, a lot of nations that are allied with the United States, all right, shall break their agreement, break their covenant with the United States and attack it. All right. Um, Let me uh, read this real quick. Um, In the book of Obadiah, um, Obadiah uh, one and seven. All the men of thy confederacy have brought thee even to the border. The men that were at peace with thee have deceived thee. Now, what's this going into? There's a lot of nations that are allied with the United States. However, the United States keep putting sanctions on all these different countries um, if they don't comply with the United States. That's breeding enemies. You know, back door these these nations are going to conspire against the United States. You know, so that the ones that are confederate are part of this so-called NATO thing. Which the NATO is just really just an extension of the United States military. That's why Vladimir Putin does not want Ukraine as a part of NATO. Because it will be no different than Mexico or Canada joining some sort of Russian um, federation. You know, It says, all the men of that confederacy shall have brought thee even to the border. The men that were at peace with thee have deceived thee and prevailed against thee. They that eat thy bread have laid a wound under thee. Now, there's a... Sc- there's a custom in the, in the scriptures, a covenant of bread and salt, right? Because when you eat with somebody, that's supposed to uh, uh, signify a covenant. And the salt is uh, salt was used to preserve things in the ancient world. There was no fridge and nothing like that, you know. So this the bread, a covenant of bread and salt means that this covenant between me and you shall be preserved for a very long time, right? But it's saying they that eat thy bread. Now, what's the modern day version of that? The contracts and treaties and different agreements that the United States have with these particular nations. It says, they that have eat thy bread have laid a wound under thee. There is no understanding in him. So pretty much what's going to happen is the Lord is going to have these nations, all right, come against the United States, all right? Even, um, even their greatest, um, um, even their greatest ally, which is Great Britain. And I'm going to read this real quick. It's a book of Jeremiah. Let me see. All right. This is Jeremiah uh, 50 and 12. It reads, your mother shall be sore confounded. Now, who's the mother of America? The mother of America is Great Britain. Great America pretty much got its building blocks. I'm I'm not saying it was discovered by the the so-called white man America, but I'm saying America became a prominent nation out of Great Britain. It's, It's their mother. It says, your mother shall be sore confounded. She that bear you shall be ashamed. Behold, the hindermost of the nation shall be a wilderness, a dry land, and a desert. So the one that bared America is going to be ashamed of America and ultimately turn their back on America, man. Okay? 
which is going to be um, when World War Three takes place. The United States is going to do something so drastic that different nations, well, you see they're doing it now. Like, don't be surprised if they will put sanctions on these other nations, man, because the Mosai is going to put it in their hearts to do these things. You know what I'm saying? Now, right now, Vladimir Putin, when you when you hear him speak, he speaks in a in a very diplomatic uh, matter. He does not want to go to war. He's trying his best to avoid war. However, this is what the scripture says in the book of Ezekiel 30 and 10. Thus saith the Lord, Yahweh Bashim Yahshah, it shall come to pass that at the same time shall things come into thy mind, and thou shalt think an evil thought. Now, this is concerning um the leader of Gog and Magog, when you read Ezekiel the 38th chapter, all right? Gog and Magog today is modern-day Russia, all right? There's going to be an evil thought. We don't know if it's Vladimir Putin for sure, because right now he's being very diplomatic. But whoever is in that position, there's going to come an evil thought for them to ally themselves, all right, against the United States. And what do I mean ally themselves? Because World War Three is going to begin in the Valley of Jehoshaphat in the Middle East, man, all right? Let me get that real quick. This is the book of uh, Jeremiah. Uh, Salakia. This is the book of Jeremiah 49 and 20. It says, Therefore, hear the counsel of the Lord, Yahweh Bashim Yahshai, that have taken against Edom. Now, who's Edom? Edom is a so called white man. Edom means red. Because um, Isaac had two sons. He had Jacob, which are you Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans. And he had Esau, which is where the Edomites descend from. Okay? That's how come they call themselves white, but they're really red. Okay? Matter of fact, just type in sunburn. Type in white person sunburn. You tell me what they look like, man. You know? Even in their Christmas songs, they said our cheeks shall be rosy. Red. You know? So when um, Isaac had Esau, he said, I shashua. I mean, wasted away is he. What's wasted away from the so-called white man? His pigmentation. Right? They have a disease called vitiligo, right? Where your pigment is not there. In the Bible, that's referred to as leprosy, man. Okay, because it's a blessing to have pigmentation, but the so-called white man is referred to as a clean leper, meaning he's leprous all over and it's not contagious. Okay, because in the ancient world and today, leprosy is a thing that's contagious, man. That's, you're supposed to put that away from you. You see? All right, now it says that he has taken against Edom and his purpose, and his purposes, that he hath purposed against the, inhab the inha inhabitants of Teman. Surely the least of the flock shall draw them out. Now, the least of the flock of who? The least of the flock of the nation of Edom. Who is the least of the flock of the nation of Edom? Amalek. Amalek is a so-called Jew today that's running around in the land of Israel swearing that they're the real people of the Mosai. How can they be the people of the Mosai when the gay capital, Tel Aviv, is over there, man? All right, and Tel Aviv in the scriptures is Ashdod, and the scripture says what? A bastard shall dwell in Ashdod, and the so-called white man is a bastard. So the true people are not in that land right now. That's one. Okay, two, that land is going to be destroyed in World War Three. All right, it's going to be built back up, but unlike America, all right, which will not be built back up, America is going to be a desert, man, all right? Just like how Sodom and Gomorrah is a desert today, and, we, and it's still spoken about today, that's going to be America in the kingdom because this place is a, is a very sinful and wicked nation, man. Every single law, statutes, and commandments in the Bible, this white man goes against it, man. All right? Because the scripture says he opposes all that, ex he opposes everything that is the most high. You see? It says, surely the least of the flock shall draw them out. All right? The least of the flock of the, of, of the nation of Edom is going to draw out who? All the rest of these nations. Because Israel... Okay, is beefing with all the nations in the Middle East. However, those middle those Middle Eastern nations, such as Iran and Assyria, is allied with who? Russia and China. Huge superpowers, man. You see? Because they tell Americans that Iran is a threat to America. Iran is not a threat to America, man. You know? The United States could wipe Iran off the map in a second. Iran is a threat to the state of Israel. That's the real threat, all right? The threat, Iran is a threat to the, the state of Israel, man. And that's, and the state of Israel can't fight Iran alone. Okay, so they have to use the United States as their proxy army. You see? Iran controls the Strait of Hormuz, okay, which controls 25% of the world exported oil. So Iran is a, is a very strategic and powerful uh, nation, man. All right? That's how come when they set up PNAC, Project for a New American Century, 1998, they wanted a reason to go over there in the Middle East. 
And what and quote for quote, they said, we need a Pearl Harbor like event to go over there in the Middle East and conquer these five uh, Middle East nations. And guess what? September 11th happened and they had all the excuse now to go in there, man. So there's a lot of orchestrating done by the so-called white man, but really the most size is the ultimate puppeteer. It says, surely the least of the flock shall draw them out. Surely he shall make their inhabitations desolate with them. Okay, so there's going to be a, there is a coming World War Three, like we keep saying through the spirit, and I hope the show stays up, all right? They cannot be that World War Three event until the RFID microchip uh, comes to pass, man, all right? But um, the scriptures in the book of Matthews, I'm going to get it right now, um, speaks about rumors of war. Right, and that's what we, and that's what we, that's what we, um, that's what we're in the um, midst of. Um, Matthew's twenty-four and six, and this is concerning the end times which we're in, and this is the Lord Yahweh Shai speaking. All right, which is a so-called black man, and ye shall hear of wars, and that's what we're hearing about right now, all over news, wars and rumors of war. Is there going to be a World War Three? Is this nation going? Is China going to be up next and fight U.S. and all? All that's that's all the hot talks. You know, that that's some of the coming signs that we at the end. And rumors of wars, see that ye be not troubled. For all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. So, see, Yahweh Shai even told him, these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. Meaning certain things have to be fulfilled, okay? Even during the time of Yahweh Shai, because they wanted the end of the Romans, okay? But there's certain things that must come to pass, all right, before the end comes, all right? And the major prophecy is that RFID microchip, all right? Now, this is the book of um, Revelations 9 and 12. It says, one woe is past, and behold, there come two woes more after. What those woes represent? Um, World War One, or World War Two, and World War Three. okay? Uh, one woe is past was World War One, and the two more woes was World War One and uh, two and World War Three, which we're in the midst of, man. We're in the midst of it, but it's not, you know, because this is going to be the war to end all wars. Because once nuclear missiles are involved, you got to understand when a nuclear missile uh, hits a place, it shuts down. It has an EMP type effect, man. Planes get shut down. Everything's an electromagnetic pulse. When these missiles do their thing, it's going to pretty much. It's going to make things back like how we, it was in the, in the ancient world, man. There's not going to be any trains and cars and all that. Things are going to slow down. It's going to purify the planet Earth, man. All right? The scriptures actually tell you that the Earth... Uh, let me get it right now in the book of... um. We get it in the book of Isaiah. That the Earth is going to rock. All right? The Earth itself, the planet... Um, um, the planet Earth is going to shake, man. This is a book of Isaiah 24 and 20. It says, The earth shall reel to and fro like a drunkard. Now, what's going to make the planet Earth shake like a drunkard? These ICBM intercontinental ballistic missiles, man. You Don't you know you got missiles the size of like 10-story buildings, man? These things are going to do some major destruction. It says, And shall be removed like a cottage and, you know, violent, man. It's going to be a violent shake because, look, you got certain islands that we speak about, like Jamaica, all right, Puerto Rico, DR, where our people dwell at. The missiles might not hit that place directly, but guess what? You're going to have thousand mile house tsunamis because the planet Earth is sort of like a, it's like the crystal ball. You ever see those crystal balls and you shake them up and snow comes down? So when it shakes, it's going to be a whole bunch of, you know what I'm saying? That water is going to create some major tsunami like things that's going to just completely engulf. And devour certain particular islands, man. All right, this thing is when this when World War Three happens, the planet Earth is going to be shaped completely different. Just like in the time of Noah, when you had the Pangaea and everything was one land, but after the flood, the lands broke up. After this World War Three, the Earth is going to look completely different. It says the Earth shall reel to and fro like a drunkard, and shall be removed like a cottage, and the transgressions thereof shall be heavy upon it, and it shall fall and not rise again. All right, so when when America is done, it's not going to rise again, all right? All right, the so-called white man is not going to rise again either, you know? I'm going to close out with this one. This is the book of Malachi, chapter 4, verse 1. It says, For behold, they cometh that shall burn as an oven, right? Now, there's not, 
Give me one day in the planet Earth history when the outside has been hot as an oven. There's been pretty, there's been times it's been pretty hot, you know, but hot as an oven. In the ancient world, a oven will cook bread very quickly, damn near instantly, man. You know, that that day is talking about when them nuclear missiles get um used, man. It says, and all the proud, and who's proud? The so-called white man, two-thirds of our own people. Pretty much everybody in this, a, a majority of people in this world are proud, man. They look up to themselves. They don't look, they don't think about the most high, you know. Yea, and all that do wickedly, what's wickedness? Going against the scriptures. Going against the, the word of the Lord. This place is completely wicked, man. You can't tell me America is not wicked, man. It says, shall be stubble. And the day that cometh shall burn them up, saith the Lord. So, there's going to come a day that's going to burn them up. Uh, saith the Lord of hosts, that it shall leave them neither root nor branch. Now, there's not going to be a blade of grass left here in America, but also root and branch is talking about their lineages, man. All right. Um, is not Yahweh shall call the root and offspring of David. All right. So there's many different scriptures letting you know that lineage is talking about like branches and stuff like that. So there's not going to be any descendants left here because when you watch these post-apocalyptic movies, like the book of Eli and such, they'll, they'll tell you that people survived after the nuclear holocaust. Hell no, that ain't going to happen, man. There's not a bunker deep enough you could dig in America that's gonna make you survive this thing, man. The radiation alone, you know, it's gonna be in a, it's gonna be a, a spectacular like event. And the only way to get delivered out of this coming destruction is via the chariots, what the world call UFOs. All right, but in the in the Bible they IFOs, they identify as the chariots of Israel. And I'm gonna say this, man. Not many people are gonna believe this, man, because of the far-fetched nature of how it sounds. But it was the same thing during the time of Noah when he was saying it was going to rain. It never rained th during the time of Noah. I mean, rain is a common thing nowadays, but in that time, it was never... There was, the idea of water coming from the sky sounded completely far-fetched. You see what I'm saying? Now we're telling you it's going to rain missiles. It also seems far-fetched, but there's nothing new under the sun. You know, the prophets always come under the scene and warn people and most people don't listen until it's too late. But if you're not of the Heavenly Father's elect and you don't get put on them chariots... There's no escape in the coming judgment of this World War III event, man. All right? So, look, man, we almost at the end. We just need them to mandate that RFID microchip, that World War III kickoff, and then we could get our deliverance, man, which feels great, man. Lord willing, most of speeds things up, and we could just get out of this captivity. So, I'm going to give all praises to Yahweh, Bashim Yahweh Shah, Bashim Chakwadash, that belongs to the apostles and the elders of Great Millsons, which were well. Citations to the hopeful elect out there, you Akim to Zadakim, that do the thing in the utmost truth and sincerity. Shalom.